much baby items are just not worth the money. In this video, I'm going to talk about which popular baby products are worth saving on or skipping. In my last video, I talked about the ones that I think are totally worth lurging on. If you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. And I am a mom to a four-year-old and an 18-month-old. We recently sold our house and like 95% of our stuff. Currently living in Airbnbs as we figure out what we want to do with our lives. But I want to start off talking about the items I think are worth saving your money on and what to get instead. And just as a quick note, all of the items I talk about in this video are linked in the description box as well, as well as you can find chapters there if you want to skip ahead to anything specific. So the first item I think is worth saving on is going to be a sound machine. I know everybody loves the hatch, but I honestly think it's so dumb. And we have two of them. I do not recommend them. If your power ever goes out, your sound machine stops working. And what happens when the sound machine suddenly cuts out? The baby wakes up. It's just not worth it for like $80 plus price tag in my opinion. Instead, the sound machines I personally love and used before kids are these little electro fan minis which have a battery charge backup. So if your power goes out, the sound machine stays on. It's also small enough that you can easily travel with it. You don't need to buy an extra sound machine for the stroller or the car or anything like that. It has a pretty powerful speaker too which you can turn on Bluetooth for and use as just your regular speaker for your family. And you can turn Bluetooth off of it, which with the hatch, you can't. And if you really love the whole concept of the toddler wake to rise clock situation, we got this little thing that costs, I want to say like 15 bucks, has a battery charge backup and it does the exact same thing, only it has fewer light settings. The two of them together still come in less than the hatch. The next thing I'm going to save on are baby clothes. Take the hand-me-downs from friends. And truthfully, that whole first year, you don't need anything fancy or crazy. Pretty much both of my kids lived in two main staples. Well, three main staples. Number one is going to be those onesie packs, the organic cotton Gerber baby onesie packs you can get at Target or Walmart. Super affordable, super easy to clean, very basic, classic, no frills. The other thing that we really love, which is definitely a little bit of a personal opinion, but I'm obsessed with them, are going to be the Honest Baby onesie gowns. So these are great because they're super stretchy and my kids literally wear them until they are about 18 months. So they only come in one size and they grow with your baby the whole way. The little elastic band is a little bit annoying. You just kind of like pull it up over their waist during diaper changes. No buttons, no zippers. And then the third one that we really love, baby kimonos. I'm a huge fan of those for the newborn days. Again, you can buy them in a little pack. So the big cost saver, you can leave them unbuttoned so that you get very easy skin to skin time with baby. The next item I suggest saving on are play mats. If you guys have been around here for a while, you know I've reviewed like all things Love Every, all of their play kits, including where to self-curate them for less. I'll leave a link to that full playlist in the description box below. And as much as we love our Love Every play drum, I do think it's an item worth saving on if you are being fiscally responsible. Well, I do like having something to hang toys from. I talked about that in my Monty Kids vs. Love Every review. I do not think the actual play mat piece is an end-all be-all. And I know there's so many on the market, like from Crate and Barrel and Pottery Barn. There's tons of expensive ones out there, not just Love Every. But I found with both of my kids that you put baby down wherever you are. And sometimes that play mat just isn't in the room. And inevitably, people end up walking over it. It ends up becoming a dog bed or a cat bed. It's one more thing to wash. As nice to have as they are, I think your money is better spent on like a love every play kit. Kind of on the note of saving on toys. What we did was the first year of my daughter's life, the only toys we had were the Love Every play kits. We had a strict nobody buys toys rule and we stuck to just those. While the price tag may seem like a little bit more up front, what it really allowed us to do was not spend money on pointless toys. We ultimately saved money because we weren't going to the store and just picking up a rogue toy here or a rogue toy there. It really forced us to just keep tunnel vision and not get tempted by random things that we didn't really need. The next thing I suggest saving on is a high chair. You really just need a cheap high chair with a foot rest to give your baby that stability they need when first learning to eat in lieu of some of these pricey wooden high chairs. I'm talking as somebody that has a Stoke Trip Trap chair and I don't honestly think it is 
it's worth spending $300 on. There's nothing wrong with it. It's great. It works. But you know, they really push it and market it as a chair that lasts forever. It grows into an even an adult chair. And while that's great, let's be real though, you're not going to have that one random unmatched chair at your dining table for adults. And you're not going to replace all of your dining chairs to match the stove trip chop chair. And what I found with both my kids at least is that by the time they hit the toddler years, they both inevitably went through phases where they just wanted to eat in my lap. And I personally have found it much easier to feed littles once they get past that like initial early eating months and they have that core stability and they kind of figure it out solid. I find it easier to feed them standing in a toddler tower, sitting in my lap, on the floor, <laughs> or at a child sized table with their size stools. Like those are the easiest places to feed them. A high chair, they know their chair is different than the other chairs. They don't like that in my experience. I just found it to be like one more thing to clean and one more thing to have to adjust the height on and just one more thing. Now, if you do want to get like a formal sort of high chair situation, I'd probably today get the Fisher Price Space Saver chair, which is a booster chair that essentially clips into any regular dining chair. Portable and mimic a full size seat. They can use the actual chair it's in as a footrest and it has two different height settings. And if your child will actually sit in their own chair at the table, it converts to a booster seat. So overall, I say that's much more worth it for under 50 bucks. Now, as far as baby items to skip, Number one is going to be a bassinet. They are often loved as like a tiny safe sleep environment. But the thing is, is babies outgrow them by six months old. And the reality is, is you're supposed to stop using them once babies can roll over usually. And babies do that before six months old typically. So it's a very short lived baby item, typically with a pretty high price tag. Now we had the snoo for both of my kids. The snoo is a little bit different because the baby is like strapped in. So you really can use it all the way till six months. I did think after the snoo with my first that it was the greatest gift to parents. She was sleeping through the night by eight weeks old. With my son though, he had colic. He absolutely hated it. He was sleeping through the night 16 weeks old, but I honestly can't say it had anything to do with the snoo. And through his sleep journey, my entire perspective on baby sleep changed a lot. So in the future, we will not be swaddling babies. And I ended up selling our snoo in our great house moving purge. And we have no plans to ever get a bassinet again. The next item I think is worth skipping are expensive baby monitors like the Owlet, the Mikyu, the Nanit, just don't waste your money. The outlet I think was even recalled and if you don't know what that is it was basically like a wearable sock that you put on your newborn and it monitored their oxygen levels and their heart rate. And then the Nanit and Mikyu are basically like video baby monitors that track your baby's sleep patterns and habits. I mean honestly I just don't think video monitors are worth it. I started babysitting and nannying when I was 13. We had little VTech audio monitors so when I had my first kid I spent $20 and got one of those little audio monitors too. It worked fantastic. I'd go outside in the backyard to the pool, had my baby monitor. I'd go out front to go get the mail, had my baby monitor. I had zero issues with audio monitors. And then I was in like mommy and me class and I heard this hack. They suggested buying those wise cameras, which only cost like 20 bucks and using that as a video monitor for a baby instead of those more expensive ones. So I did it just out of curiosity and oh my God, my anxiety went through the roof watching her all of a sudden because I had the ability to watch her in her crib any little noise she made with an audio monitor you just kind of like okay let's wait a second and see what happens opening up the camera seeing what was going on I became so obsessive and it was like such a toxic relationship that I finally just got rid of it I put it away and when she was old enough like when she got out of her crib and we transitioned her to like a free for all bad. I put it back in her room and she knew it was there and she hated it. And she would always like dumb plug it and move it away. And so then I put it in my son's room because he was having like some sleep problems. And once again, I obsessively watched it. So now we are back to audio only monitors. All the kids are safe. Everything's fine. I've literally been using audio only monitors. I am now 33 years old. I've been using them for 20 years with kids and my anxiety levels are significantly down. Next things that are gonna be the like the docketot, baby swings and baby jumpers. They're all gonna kind of get lumped together here. So we had a docketot with my first and my second and became a glorified dog bed. But really with both kids, the price tag was never justified. And I even think they ended up getting like recalled and banned in a lot of countries and they're big sleep no-nos since they don't meet the American Academy of Pediatric Safe Sleep Standards. Now if you were giving it to a gift store or somebody, I'm sure they're gonna love it. 
it. It's gonna be fantastic. It's bougie. Who's not gonna love it? And then as far as like baby swings and jumpers, again, I'm not a big fan of baby containers. If you are gonna get one, I would really only get a baby bouncer like I talked about in my last video. Baby swings are just so hit or miss. Kids <laughs> really either like love them or they hate them. They're not as much of a safe bet as a baby bouncer. And then baby jumpers are really typically not safe for baby's hip. A lot of times there's a lot of recalls for them. It puts them into unnatural positions before they're ready. It's just probably something to like be avoided. Next thing's gonna be a white former. I honestly just always saw them as like a mold breeding ground and just one more thing to clean. They dry out your wipes faster, personally easier. When you are doing a diaper change, the first thing you do is take out a wipe, put it on your shoulder, stick it in your bra, put it on your chest, or you can even hold it in your hand. Get baby undressed, take off the old diaper. At that point, your body heat has warmed it up enough where you can easily wipe them if you're nervous about your baby not liking a cold wipe. The cold wipe thing, babies typically move through that very quickly. Like it's not like a huge thing. And kind of in that same vein, the diaper genie pale situation. Back when I was 13, families I was at for had these things and I have always hated them. If they overflow, it's so annoying. Changing the bag is annoying. You still gotta take them out. Can't hold that much. I mean, maybe some of them can now, but it's just like a glorified trash can and baby poop doesn't really smell till they start solids. I don't know. We always just had a small bag and we'd just take that out every day or every other day or if it started to smell, it was not a big deal. Keep your life simple. Why have one more thing you need to have special bags for? Now, the one exception to those would be if you have a dog. Dogs really like to get into baby diapers. And in that case, having them kind of protected under that diaper genie layer may save you some big cleanups down the road. That's kind of a wait and see type of situation. And then the other thing I think is worth skipping is just like a changing table. Unless you have a crib with a changing table attached to it and you need that extra storage, they're generally a pretty short-lived item. I personally used a little console table and that way it was just a regular piece of furniture that we easily transitioned into anything else. You could use the top of a baby's dresser. Oftentimes we would just change our baby at like the kitchen counter, on the floor, on our bed, and instead just use like a little portable changing caddy that goes around the house with you or you have a couple stations set up on each end of your house to make your life easier. And then the last baby item I suggest skipping is a baby bathtub. These things have been the bane of my existence. I have officially sworn them off. If we have any more kids, I am done with them. I have tried so many. They inevitably grow mold. They are just one more thing to clean, one more thing to trip over, one more safety hazard. They're just annoying. I just suggest putting baby on like the floor of the shower or film up a regular bathtub with like an inch of water and let them free bathe. With my first, it was fine. I would hold her a lot in the newborn days, not even using the baby sling thing. My son, he has always just been a maniac and he would always like just try to throw himself out of that thing <laughs> and it was a bigger safety hazard than it was help with him. Free bathing all the way. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, let me know what baby items you think are worth saving on or skipping altogether, your biggest baby regrets. If you haven't already, be sure to go back, check out my last video on splurges. As always, my name's Rachel, have a good one.